Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today we're excited to check out Life Adventures from the Parker Bros. This is for two to four players, ages eight plus. I'll take you, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to play. And in Life Adventures, this is a storytelling card game in which you are going to be telling the story of your life as it unfolds, as you go on adventures, have a family, get wealth, get a career, buy houses, buy pets, do all sorts of various different stuff like that. It's a very light simple storytelling game it's got a little bit of take that uh but is it good let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of life adventure so first and foremost we're gonna handy dandy rule sheet it's one large page double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples and it's okay i really wish they went over exactly what all the different symbols were they cover most of them but they do not cover uh the passport one and also that should be on the player reference card and it's not on the player reference card which is highly annoying but that'll make more sense once i show you the game Overall, though, pretty easy game to understand. So in Life Adventures, you are going to be playing uh, out your life. You're going to be having wealth and family and adventures and getting a career and trying to gain victory points. Victory points are going to be these numbers in the upper left-hand corner. At the end of the game, once you have encountered 10 plus 60 cards, which means you're kind of retired, because uh, apparently you're retiring at 60 in this game, uh, the game will be over. Why can't I not find a 10? Yeah, they look like that. So, how does the game play? How does it work? Let's show you the components to get the gameplay. So, first and foremost, at the beginning of the game, you're going to draw five cards. You can do all from the same pile. You can mix it up. You can do it however you want to do it. So, I'm going to do four of these and two adventure because I like adventure. And then on your turn, it's pretty simple. What you're going to do on your turn is you're going to play a card onto the table, tell a story to match that card, and take a new card from the top of any draw pile. If you can't play a card, then you have to discard a card into a, a discard pile, which will be on the top of either any of these, and then draw a new card. So how does it work? Well, I started off my adventure, and I had purchased an igloo. I wanted to go live in Antarctica, and I purchased an igloo, and it was awesome. So I got myself an igloo, and now I have a house, which is a prerequisite for some other cards like home improvements. And that would be my entire turn. And then I draw a new one, so you say, let's grab another adventure. So everybody else would go and get back to my turn and say, well, I also learned how to play the bongos. It turns out I met this ancient soothsayer who played the bongos when I was living in Antarctica, and he taught me how to play the bongos. So hooray. So now I'll draw a family card. And I'm going to keep drawing cards. The only time I don't keep a card is if I come upon one of those plus 10 cards. If I come across a plus 10 card, I'm going to set it off to the side. And that's going to uh, mean that it is one step closer to the end of the game. Because as I mentioned, you keep going until you get six of these. Now there also will be some cards that have prerequisites in the top right corner. So for instance, I can't have a baby girl until I get married. How traditional that is. Uh, also, I can't go, you know, uh, there's certain places that you can't go, like I can't get home improvements until I have a house. Uh, this card, this means that this is something that you're going to play on someone. This is an attack card. So this is a lawsuit. Sue another player. They must give you a card worth 30 plus points from their life story. They keep this card and you get the, their card. And you kind of try to make up the story as you go. Uh, this one, once again, is home improvements. Let's check out the adventures. So, uh, the adventures one, you're going to need a passport to go on some of the adventures. For instance, you can't trek to the North Pole unless you have a passport. You can't sail around the world unless you have a boat. So you'll have to get those cards in order to go on those different adventures, which will hopefully give you a lot of points. Uh, where's the career cards? Yeah, you also can get a degree, much like in uh, the regular game. You can get a regular job, uh, or you can get a degree, and that will unle unleash unlock very popular jobs. So it'll give you a lot of points. For instance, you got to be a politician. You get 90 points, but you have to have a degree in order to become a politician. You also have the paydays, which will give you 20 bucks a pop if you choose to play it, but honestly... They're not that valuable because most of the other cards are worth more than 20 points. Anywho, you're going to continue to go until someone has uh, un unlocked, has picked up the final plus 10, which the, you'll play till six of them. You can play a longer game or a shorter game if you really feel like it. And at that point, you will tally up how many points you have in the upper left-hand corner. Whoever has the largest number of green is going to be the winner of the game and have the best life. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Life Adventures. Alrighty then, Life Adventures from the Parker Bros. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game is not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two to four players, er, restricted player count. Take that with a grain of salt. You can easily play it with more players. It will just stretch out the game a little bit longer. Uh, in between turns, I should say. The game length will remain the same, but the time between turns will be a little bit longer. Also, if you don't like storytelling games, this is not going to be for you. Pure and simple. This is 
70% storytelling and I, no, actually I'd say 80% storytelling and 20% take that. And that is all there is to this game. There is nothing else. So if you don't like storytelling, if you're not going to tell your story about your life, you're going to be bored out of your freaking mind with this game. And the kids you play with, I'm assuming you're playing with kids, are going to be bored out of their mind when playing this. Now, that's another comment I have with this, with this game. This is purely children slash family territory. There's no other way you're going to play this game. It doesn't matter if someone you know loves life. It's their favorite game ever. This is nothing like life at all. Like life, the game where you spin it, you move around. Zero. <laughs> It is not at all. They are completely different beasts. And really, aside from children and family, I cannot recommend this game for anybody else. Even though I'm about to tell you, I probably wouldn't even recommend it for them. Another comment I have with this game is that I wish the symbology was a little bit clearer, which is a little bit cleaner. I wish that back when you got married, like maybe it had a giant diamond ring on the bottom. So now you knew that you had unlocked that giant diamond ring because uh, the kids didn't know what the passport was until we figured out that the passport was had this sciencey symbol. And we're just like, is that a science degree? I don't even know. Uh, the player aid cards are okay, but they definitely could have been better. They should have had the list of the symbols on there. How does that... I, I don't understand how that's not a thing. <sighs> Continuing on... With, wait, are we on pros or on cons? We're on the con side. Oh, the game's boring. I mean, that's just flat out. And take that with a grain of salt. This is a very difficult game for me to review. I personally thought it was boring as dirt, and I never wanted to play it ever again. I never do. I never want to play it ever again. I played it three times, and I don't ever want to play it again. But... But, moving on to the pros, the kids in my classroom enjoy this game. I don't, I don't get it. Most of the time, I can see why. I can see why kids like the games in my class. And we play tons and tons and tons of games in my class. Most of the time, we're about on the same page. This game sucks. This game's okay. This game's great. We're generally around the same area. However, I'm like, this game sucks. And they're like, oh, we like this game. This is a lot of fun. We get to tell a story about our life. And for that... I, I guess I can kind of recommend trying it out if you have younger kids. I played this with kids ages 6 to 10, and they enjoyed the game. And they wanted to play it again. And we played it again, and I was still bored out of my damn mind. And I like storytelling. I do. I enjoy storytelling games. I think they're fun. But this one, it's just such a disjointed storytelling. It's just like, oh, this happened. And then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, then I sued you, so this happened, and it just, ah, it didn't do it for me. I have a hard time recommending this game to anybody, really, I, I cannot. It's boring, it's repetitive, the storytelling in it is not that much fun because it's, it's so disjointed, and in the end, I don't like life adventures. I don't think it's a good game, but I'm not the target market, and the target market enjoy the game so i'm still going to review it poorly i'm going to say that this is this is a poorly i'm going to review it like it's a poor game but at the same time i have to tell you that the kids i played it would like it so who knows so that's life adventures the game of life adventures i guess is the proper name from the parker bros divisive in my classroom i'm not going to play it ever again i'm getting rid of it because i don't have any fun playing it but if your kids like storytelling if they like talking about the future and what they're going to do when they grow up then yeah maybe check this one out like i said i got this for 50 cents at a thrift shop on half off day so 50 cents i mean it's worth a shot right but for me personally no no thank you so it is the game of life adventures absolutely nothing like life it's a storytelling game and i don't like it but my kids do so if you enjoyed this review please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know when's the last time you played a game that you were super sure somebody was gonna like you're like oh my gosh you're gonna love this game it's gonna be great it's gonna be fantastic and then they were like eh, i don't like it me personally, it was Vikings Gone Wild. I, I played it and I had amazing success with everybody I played it with. And I actually introduced it to somebody about two weeks ago. And they were like, eh, I don't like it. And I was like, what? But you like deck building. What's your deal, man? So, I don't know. Different strokes, different folks, I guess. But when's the last time you introduced a game to somebody and they didn't like it? And you were very, very surprised. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.